Good morning, Columbus High School. This is your principal, Dr. Ortiz, and I'm so excited that we are going to be coming back in hybrid March 29th. I hope you enjoy this brief presentation that will describe what it will look like in hybrid. In this presentation, we will look at what returning to school safely looks like at Columbus High School. We will cover shared values, return to school options, our hybrid learning schedule, maintenance and operations, the daily wellness self-screening process, what students can expect when returning to school, food services, and time for questions. We have four shared values that will keep us safe and healthy at school. First, we will follow public health orders. Two, we will maintain a caring and supportive school culture. Three, we will follow health and safety protocols. Lastly, we will communicate honestly and in a timely manner. So what are the options for return to school? Option one is the full-time distance learning model, which means 100% of distance learning instruction Monday through Friday. An important difference is that beginning March 29th, students will be in Zoom with their teacher for the entire class. Option two is the hybrid model, which is a blended model with in-person instruction for cohorts A and B following public health requirements, such as social distancing and wearing masks and distance learning instruction for cohort C. Let's take a closer look at the hybrid learning schedule. Students in the hybrid model will be broken into three groups, including cohorts A or B for in-person learning and cohort C for daily distance learning. Class hours are from 8.30 to 12.30 p.m. Cohort A or B students will be on campus on their designated days twice per week. The off-campus cohorts will join each period via Zoom. You could see which cohort you are on on Student Connect and Parent Connect. Again, students can see which cohort you are on on Student Connect and Parent Connect. At 12.30 p.m., we have school dismissal and a grab and go lunch. From 1.15 to 2 p.m., we have intervention or enrichment and office hours will be from 2.15 to 3 p.m. Now let's look at our schedule a little bit closer. Let's look at the Columbus hybrid schedule for the week of March 29, which will be slightly different due to spring break, which begins on April 2nd, Friday. As you can see, Cohort A is in person on Monday and Thursday, and students will zoom in the other days. Cohort B is in person on Tuesday and Wednesday, and students will zoom in the other days. Cohort C students will zoom into class every day, Monday through Thursday. Dismissal and a grab and go lunch is at 12.30 p.m. This means students are required to grab their lunch from the cafeteria and go off campus 
promptly. Students could not eat their lunch on campus at this time. Intervention and enrichment will be conducted off campus via Zoom from, from 1.15 to 2 p.m. Office hours with your teacher will continue online from 2.15 to 3 p.m. Students can find the Zoom links for intervention and office hours on their teachers weekly at a glance on their Canvas homepage. Again, there is no school on Friday, April 2nd, because that marks the beginning of spring break. This next slide shows our regular Columbus High School hybrid schedule that goes into effect after spring break, April 12th, Monday. Cohort A is in person on Monday and Thursday and will Zoom in the other days. Cohort B is in person on Tuesday and Friday and will Zoom in the other days. Cohort C will Zoom into class every day, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. All students, cohorts A, B, and C will follow the Wellness Wednesday schedule similar to our current distance learning schedule that has been in place this semester since January. The Wellness Wednesday schedule can be found on the Columbus High School website and offers a more detailed overview of our schedule with Zoom link and contact information. Again, Wellness Wednesday is a distance learning day for all students. All students will Zoom into their period three homeroom. Teachers may allow students to participate in the weekly guest speaker session or require that students stay and work with him or her if they need additional help with schoolwork. From 9 to 10 a.m., students may access one-on-one -on -one counseling with one of our therapists for support and resources related to social emotional needs like anxiety or depression. From 940 to 1040, students can assist teacher office hours for additional one-on-one -on -one tutoring. From 1045 to 1145, students have the choice of accessing a range of resources listed, such as college and career advising. Please note that students can access tutoring with Mr. Candelas every day, 2 to 3 p.m., Wednesdays, 10.45 to 11.45, and evenings, 5 to 6 p.m. Let's look at the intervention and enrichment blocks a little bit more closely. For intervention, teachers will meet with students on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday via distance learning from 1.15 to 2 p.m. Intervention is required for students at risk of dropout. During intervention, teachers will work with students on step three to recover credits needed for graduation. Students may also meet with the counselor for academic or one-on-one -on -one counseling during this time. For enrichment, students who are on track for graduation and do not need academic intervention can access special activities, such as those for seniors hosted by the Lion's Den. The next few slides describe the systems and protocols in place to keep our school clean and safe. Maintenance and operations is a shared responsibility. We will each do our part to keep our school clean and sanitized. Custodians will sanitize frequently, touch surfaces at least once daily, clean desks overnight, and perform all cleaning duties on the daily checklist. Teachers will clean their individual teacher spaces and supervise student cleaning. Secondary students 
will clean their individual desk and desk shields upon entering and exiting the classroom. Downey Unified has invested resources into ventilation and air quality filtration systems throughout, including evaluation of HVAC units district-wide, research vetted and improved air quality options, upgraded filters district-wide, purchased and installed ionization units district-wide, purchased and installed portable HEPA filters. The ventilation and, and air quality filtration systems in classrooms and offices on our campus and district includes a three-part approach to better air quality. Number one, air treatment. Address COVID and pathogens in ionization. Number two, air filters. Maximize air filtration with current and future HVAC modifications and replacements. And number three, fresh air. Optimize outdoor air. The air treatment filters work in three simple ways. Number one, remove particulates in the air. Number two, needlepoint bipolar ionization technology safely cleans indoor air without producing any ozone. Number three, just like sunlight does to outdoor air, ions produced attached to airborne particles, eliminating viruses, mold, etc. These are images of the air treatment filters you will see in your classrooms or in the office. The next few slides will focus on the importance of daily wellness self-screening process. Every morning, each student will be required to complete a self-screening prior to reporting to school. The first class begins at 8.30 a.m., so you are required to be on campus 10 to 15 minutes prior to start class to show the security officer your screening and get to class in person on time. This email will be sent to each student's email each morning. This email will be sent from COVID Screener Downey Unified. The option will be available to receive this daily screening via text if selected. All people on campus, including students and staff, will have the option to do the self-screening through text messaging in the future. Until then, it is required that it be completed through email prior to coming onto campus. The first screening question will ask, this is the daily symptom check. Based on your responses, you will either be approved to report to campus or you will be directed to follow other procedures. By completing the survey and submitting your responses, you agree the information collected can be used by the district to provide a safe environment for you and for other students and staff. The data will be used solely to determine if you should attend campus at this time and it will be kept confidential. You will be then asked to check all the symptoms that apply. From the statements below, please check all that apply. Have you had a fever of 104 or higher? Chills, cough, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, persistent headache, and or sore throat within the last 24 hours? Have you taken fever-reducing medicines like or not limited to Tylenol, Advil, or Motrin to reduce a fever in the last 24 hours? To the best of your knowledge, have you been exposed to anyone who has tested positive with coronavirus in the past 14 days? Have you experienced recent loss of taste or smell? Or none of the above. Third, you will be asked if you have been tested within the last three days for coronavirus and awaiting results. After you complete the survey, you will either get a green check mark indicating it is safe for you to come on to school in person. Again, the first class begins at 8.30 a.m., so you are required to be on campus 10 to 15 minutes prior to the start of class to show the security officer your screening and to get to class in person on time. However, if you get a red X, do not come on campus. You will have the opportunity to zoom into class and will be counted as present online by your teacher if you attend class via Zoom. Essentially, if you get a red X, you must 1. Do not come onto campus. Call the main office to report in-person absence. When feasible, log into distance learning classroom. Number 2. The principal will get an email with all those who were required to stay home based on the screening questions. In hybrid learning, students have four daily requirements. 
Number one, each morning, students will be required to show their certified status, green check with date, on their cell phone or device prior to entering campus. Number two, students will be required to wear a clean face mask on campus. Number three, students will be required to bring their fully charged device and charger with them for in-person learning. Number four, bring a water bottle. The water fountains will be out of service, but we do have a water bottle filling station for students. Remember, do not come on campus if you have a fever of 100.4 or more, you are experiencing symptoms including a persistent cough, shortness of breath, or sore throat, you have taken fever-reducing medication to reduce a fever in the last 24 hours, you live with and or have been exposed to a person who tested positive for COVID-19 or had COVID-like symptoms within the last 14 days. Lastly, if you tested for COVID-19 within the last three days and are waiting for results. We will now look at what to expect when returning to school in person. The first thing you will see every morning is our security officer who will require students to show their COVID-19 screening prior to entering campus. Show your green check. Two, face masks will be mandatory when on campus. No exceptions. Also, you can expect to see student desk shields on every desk and assigned student seating. You will see safety signage throughout campus, classrooms, and office. You will also see additional hand washing and hand sanitizing stations. Students, sanitize your hands throughout the day. You will see social distancing signage reminding all of us to keep six feet apart. You'll see additional hydration stations where you can fill your water bottle as needed. And you will also see maximum capacity limits in restrooms, classrooms, office, and more. As mentioned, face coverings are mandatory on campus. Any person on campus is required to have their nose and mouth covered while on campus, no exceptions. Let's talk about approved face coverings. One, cloth covering secured to head with ties or straps, double layer gaiter. On an as needed basis, Downey Unified will only be issuing three layered masks. Let's talk about non-approved face coverings. These are face coverings which do not fully cover the nose, mouth, and chin. Bandanas, lace, mesh or crocheted face coverings are not approved. Lastly, when face coverings should be replaced. Face coverings should be replaced when they do not fully cover the nose, mouth, and chin. When they are stretched out or have damaged ties and straps. When they are so big or too small, they cannot stay on the face securely. They should be replaced when they have holes or tears in the fabric, and they should be replaced if they are wet. Now let's talk about desk shields. In order to keep everyone safe, teachers and students will have desk shields as an added layer of protection. Students are required to stay with their cohort, A or B. Students are not permitted to visit other classrooms, not on your schedule, or wander in the hallways during class time. Students will have assigned seating according to the teacher's seating chart. Upon entering the classroom, Students are expected to use hand sanitizer 
and wipe down their desk and shield with sanitation wipes that will be provided. Students are expected to do this upon entering the classroom and upon leaving the classroom. Safety signage throughout the campus. Students who return to school in person will see safety signage everywhere. As mentioned, in order to social distance and keep everyone safe, there will be person's maximum signage that must be followed in the classrooms, office, and restrooms. No exceptions. We will have an on-campus screening area. If a student begins to show COVID-related symptoms during the school day, the student will be provided a single-use surgical mask and taken to a designated screening area on campus. Once in the screening area, the student will be checked. Parent and or guardian will be contacted immediately and asked to pick up student from school and encouraged to be evaluated by a medical professional. Now let's look at campus directionality. The Columbus gates by the G wing will remain locked throughout the school day. All students and staff will enter and exit through the main entrance by the flagpole. Columbus students will get screened by the security officer prior to entering campus, as previously mentioned. Food services, grab and go. Meals will be provided in a grab and go fashion. Students will not be eating lunch on campus. In-person students will take their grab and go lunch for that day. After school, Students may grab a lunch by the cafeteria window and then must exit campus immediately by the flagpole. Due to the pandemic, students are not permitted to hang out after school, nor can they have lunch on campus. All other students will be able to pick up meals in a drive through and or walk up fashion at designated school sites. Visit our school website for locations closest to your home. Visit the district's COVID website to find a return to school guidebook and a return to school video. We have covered a lot of important information in this return to school presentation. I want us to review the four daily requirements students must follow for in-person learning. One, Students must show their COVID screening certified status, the green check with the date, to staff prior to entering campus. Students must wear a clean face mask to school. Third, students are required to bring a fully charged device and charger for in-person learning. Lastly, don't forget to bring your water bottle. This concludes the exciting presentation. Thank you for being a good audience. We look forward to seeing you back on campus while following public health guidelines that will keep everyone safe and healthy. We will have an informational session regarding our return to school Thursday at 5.30 p.m. See your email for the Zoom link. For any additional questions, please contact us at area code 562-904-3552 between the hours of 7.30 a.m. and 3.30 p.m.